Hey YouTube, how's it going? And welcome, or welcome back, to my third person action roguelike devlog. This is the third video in the series where I'll be going over two new characters, items, and environments. Just as a reminder, this is the third video in the series, so if you're still unclear on things after this, go back and watch the other devlogs, and drop a like if you're looking forward to the game. So, kicking things off, I'll be introducing a tentatively named character, Bakaria, Master of Light. Bakaria is a long-ranged, agile character, being slowly overtaken by Light's corruption. Starting out the same way I have with all my characters so far, her passive is Precision. The more shots you hit in a row, the more meter she gains, and missing shots drains the meter. This meter provides a stacking bonus damage for a significant boost. I was struggling a bit with designing this character's passive. I wanted to reward high skill gameplay, and this provides a bonus minigame, so to speak, within the actual game, which makes the point and click style of sniping a bit more exciting. So, on to her abilities. While unscoped, Bakaria recklessly discharges her rifle, delivering a small area blast around her weapon. I've always liked the sniper shotgun classic gun combo in games, and felt like this was the right character to fit that into. While scoped, she fires a powerful beam of light that stops on the first enemy hit. If this beam collides with a piece of terrain, it bounces up to two times and splits into four beams. Her primary ability is Splinter Shot. Bakaria overcharges her weapon for several seconds. While this buff is active, her shots now chain between all nearby enemies up to five times. Her secondary ability is quite interesting. She throws out three prisms ahead of her, and if you shoot into these prisms, it causes the sniper shots to bounce around within them, splitting and bouncing and creating this fantastic area of pure annihilation. Her tertiary ability is a burst of light that propels her in the camera direction, and fires out an array of homing projectiles that track down all nearby enemies. This allows her to escape from sticky situations while also providing a bit of damage that isn't as demanding as playing with the sniper. You don't have to be as precise. And because of that, it doesn't contribute or benefit from her passive. Bakari's signature ability is extremely powerful. She takes a low stance and fires a massive beam that repeatedly pulses and hits all enemies, sometimes multiple times. This ability can also ricochet off her prisms, so I'm interested in to see how people use it. Overall, this gives her a very versatile platform. She could be either high precision, very focused targeting, or if you're very good with the terrain, you can bounce her shots for even more damage. Moving on to another one of the original characters I've ever designed, who's been redesigned a few times and may still have a few more iterations to go, Quake, the Master of Earth. Quake is a strong, resilient fighter who channels his power into the surrounding Earth to deliver devastating damage. Quake's passive is the complete opposite of Surge, and while simple, it has a lot of complexity to it. Quake's passive is... standing still. Yep, that's right, the longer you stand still, the more damage you do. Now as I said in my previous devlog, standing still in games like this is usually a death sentence, and since my abilities can knock most characters back, this passive functions by making sure you're not input any directions, rather than not moving, period. By doing this, this allows Quake to use his abilities to move while also retaining his meter. Quake's primary attack summons a large rock at a target position. Quake can then use his secondary attack to control up to three of these rocks at a time and unleash them in a target direction. And this ability will have an upgrade later that allows you to control more of the rocks. Quake's primary ability is an Earth Shield. I said standing still was basically suicide, so Quake needed some kind of shield to protect himself. After activating, Quake becomes mostly immune to all damage for a brief period of time. Quake's secondary ability, and I think my favorite, is Pillar. Quake targets an area and prepares a large pillar for eruption. After releasing the ability, Quake summons a pillar in the direction, and the player flicks their mouse allowing you to control the angle of the pillar. The most fun part of this ability is you can use it under yourself, and give yourself a super jump all while building up your specialty meter. And I have a lot of fun just jumping around using his own ability. Quake's third ability is Charge. 
Quake quickly dashes in the direction, damaging all enemies and unleashing a shotgun of shrapnel, dealing damage in a cone in front of them. Quake's signature ability is Slam. Quake dives quickly downward, pulling all nearby enemies downward with him before slamming the ground and erupting in a wave of small pillars in a large area. This ability does massive damage, but only to grounded enemies, so try to use the wind-up of the ability to pull airborne enemies downwards beforehand. Overall, while his passive might seem simple of just stand still, this creates a very dynamic character where you have to really gauge the enemy power and know when you can and can't stand still, and use your existing momentum and abilities to move around for you. Next up, I've implemented items, and these neat little chests to hold them. Currently there are four tiers of items. Common, and these are mostly stat modifiers like attack speed, move speed, that sort of thing. Next there's uncommon items. These are items that provide bonuses that your character can specifically build into, like critical strikes. The third tier is character upgrade items. These items are special in that they themselves don't give you any bonuses, but instead they give you an ability upgrade point for one of your four abilities or two attacks. Each character's abilities all have an upgrade menu specific to that ability, and these upgrades allow you to control the way you build your character. I aim to make these drop often, but not extremely frequently, so it's not likely that you can just take every single upgrade within an ability. It should be a choice. And I could go on for actual hours about every single character's upgrades and every ability, but I want people to find out cool combinations or cool upgrade paths on their own. The final tier of items is Mythic. These items will fundamentally alter your character or provide bonuses that directly affect your playstyle. For instance, one item I'm calling Pendulum of Power. Every 4 seconds your character deals 200% damage. After that time passes, you now only deal 50% damage. For the next few seconds. I'm trying to design items that aren't simply deal more damage, but provide a fun or interactive way of dealing more damage. Another item is Essence Channeler. Your common and uncommon item bonuses are half, but for each common and uncommon item, you gain 5% more damage. This is only a small subset of the total items I have planned, and on release I aim to have a minimum of 40 to 50 items. I've also built out the UI to show these, and while it does need a little bit of work, this should give you a general idea of what it will look like in game, the stacking numbers denoting how many of each item you have, and the colors on them denoting the tier that they are. Finally, I've been working on some environments. I've shown off some characters that already can benefit from certain environments, like Surge, who can use his passive to slide around big sloping hills to gain more speed. And I'm trying to design levels that offer certain characters strengths and some weaknesses, so that in this procedurally generated world, you can navigate to these areas for your character and use them to your advantage. My goal is to make very varied and interesting terrains that are both beautiful to look at and fun to play around in. So thank you for watching this devlog, in the next one I'm going to show off two more characters and give some more depth about the gameplay loop overall, as well as show off one of the first boss fights that you saw at the beginning of this video. I sincerely hope to see you next time, and if you enjoy this video, remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel. This is a solo project, and it does help my motivation knowing people are actually interested in playing it. I hope to see you next time. See ya.